If you're still spending money on expensive APIs every month, you're throwing money away. I've built a lot of workflows in N8N and found out you can replace most of them with free alternative. And in this video, we'll show you the complete method to do it. First, let's understand the general process. So let's say you want to do a task and you have an API to do it, but you see it's costing a lot every month. The way to replace it with a free alternative is to find a Python library or framework that you can use and host on Docker. We'll see how to do it later and then call it when you need it on your N8N workflow. So let's take uh, those examples. We have uh, two examples here. So how to get uh, the video transcript of a YouTube video or how to generate a PDF. So for the first example, as I said, uh, let's say we want to get the video transcript of a YouTube video. To do so, uh, I would go on the Scrapper website like Apify and for example, find uh, this uh, YouTube transcript Scrapper. But as you can see here, this is $20 per month plus usage. So it's paid. So let's say I'm running this. Let me remove this and this and let's run it. So as you can see here, there is an issue in the run actor node and uh, they tell me to check my credential. And this is because the free trial has expired. And this is the case for most uh, paid APIs. You have a free uh, trial, but you only have uh, a few free trials to test if the API is uh, fit your expectation. So if you don't want to pay and have it unlimited for free, uh, you can do what I said and uh, create a container on Docker, an image and then a container. For example, this is YouTube Transcript API. So this is an API uh, that I self-host on Docker. I will show you just after how to build it. So let me run this. So now it's on. So this is how you call the API that you self-host. Uh, the method is transcript and the idea of the video is uh, this. So let me run this. And as you can see, we have uh, 200 items for each one, a duration, start and text. And let's say I wanted after this to have it uh, formatted in a way I can reuse it. You can use uh, anything after this. And as you can see, we have the timestamps uh, and the phrase and another timestamp, etc. So let me go back on Docker, uh, stop run this, and uh, let me show you how this is working. So as you can see, I have a folder in my uh, computer that is called custom tools. And I have some API that I self host, for example, here to get the transcript of a video, to create a clip uh, of a long form video, to generate image or to generate a PDF and more. So let me open this one. Uh, so most of your self-hosted APIs will have three files. So this one have only two because it is a, a really simple API. I will show you this just after. So the first uh, folder will be the app.python. This is where you will uh, import the libraries you need, the framework, and you will use some function and create the process and customize uh, how your API will work. Then you have a Docker file. So the Docker file is basically line of commands that will be executed when you run your uh, API. And finally, you should have a requirement.txt uh, that we will see in the next API uh, that basically you just uh, specify the version of each uh, framework and libraries from Python that you use. Uh, so let me open this file. So this is the app.python. Uh, as you can see, I uh, use Flask and this is the library I use. It's called YouTube Transcript API. And as you can see, this is really simple. This is just like you create an app uh, from Flask and you just define a function called get transcript and you just specify uh, the ID of the video. And basically you just retrieve the transcript of this video. And after this, this is just some, um, some error management. As you can see, if the transcript is disabled, we throw the error 403, or the video is not available, we throw the error 404 and uh, error 500 also. And at the end, you specify the port where uh, you will access this API. So for example, for this one, uh, I write it by myself because this is a really easy one, but you will see later if you don't know how to code, how to do it with uh, ChatGPT or Cloud, like so basically with an LLM. So this was the app.python uh, and let me open the Docker file so you understand. So as you can see, you have Python, you specify some things, uh, you install a YouTube transcript API uh, with Flask and you expose a port 5050 and you run uh, the Python code from app.python. So this is really basic. Uh, let me also show you something else. 
obviously because uh, this is a self-hosted API, you, you can also access it via uh, your browser. So let's say I'm calling uh, so the API on the port 5050. So this is the YouTube transcript API. You specify the method, then we can uh, retrieve normally it's here yeah as you can see this is the method and this is a get method um, and you specify so after the interrogation point this is the parameter and the parameter is called id and you specify the id just after it so let me run this for example and as you can see we retrieve the entire uh, script you can also put it like this uh, to have it in a better uh, format so let me go back here and to call uh, your self-hosted API, uh, you need, so here, because we retrieve information, this is a get method. And maybe you notice this, but when you call it via browser, you can just write uh, localhost 5050. But when you call it on your NA10 instance, you have to uh, specify HTTP uh, host.docker.internal. So you add this and you can uh, specify it normally after it. Now we can go to the second example. Let me do this. So this one was to generate a PDF, as you can see. And there is a tool that is relatively famous. It's called pdf.co. And as you can see, this is also a paid API. So the minimum is $9 per month if you take it annually. So I'll show you how to replace it with a free alternative. Uh, so let me run this again. So here we generated an HTML template and we want to create a PDF uh, from this template. So as you can see, authorization failed. This is not working. So if we connect it to our free alternative, we go back on Docker. So I'm shutting it down every time uh, to explain everything, but you can just run it and let it like this. Or you can even rent a server and host your API on it. But obviously your NHN instance have to be on the same server to be uh, interacting with uh, your local API uh, and you can let it run uh, forever. So let me run this. And as you can see, the node executed successfully. And we have a file created that is a PDF. You can download it like this. Let me open this. Uh, as you can see, this is a basic one. I didn't want to, to bother. And also normally it should be saved in this file. Yes, here, I think is this one. Yeah, it's also saved on your uh, local computer. Uh, stop run this and go back on the app.python. So as you can see, this is a bit longer and more complex, I would say, because we import way more things. You create a Flask app, we specify where the output should be located. Uh, so this time it's a post method because we're uh, not asking for information. We're creating information or sending information. And the method is called, uh, we have two methods. We have PDF text. So to create a PDF based on only text, or uh, a second one that is called PDF HTML, that is to create a PDF based on uh, HTML code. Uh, and so this one I created it with uh, ChatGPT. So if you want to do the same thing with uh, your own case and you don't really know how to code, but you understand it, what you can do is go on uh, any LLM and ask it. Uh, so I want to replace this API that is doing this, this, and this with the free alternative that I host on Docker. So please create me an app.python file plus a docker file plus a requirement.txt and it will create the three files that I mentioned. And after this, you just have to create an image on docker and then build the container on it. And you will end up with uh, something like this and you can just run your API. Just when you're doing it, make sure uh, the port where you are exposing this API are empty. So you can ask the GPT to uh, give you the command to check if nothing is on this port. And then you will have a thing like this and you test. You try one time, if it's working, it's good. If it's not working, you explain what is the error you get and you uh, do this again and again until this is working. So, uh, as I said, this is the app.python and you have the port where it's attached. Uh, let me go back here. You also have your Docker file, again, a bit more complex. And as you can see, this is on the Docker file where we'll run the requirement.txt. Uh, let me show you here. As you can see, we specify some version of what we're using. And after this, you're good to go. So I hope this video helped you to understand how to replace paid API with free alternative. I know this is maybe a bit uh, theoretic because I didn't build it with you. 
but if you want me to build uh, one and maybe a specific one please mention it in the comments so i can build it from scratch in front of you let me know if you have any question thank you for watching